Hey guys, Ben here, and welcome back to another video on Supergirl. Today we're going to be talking about some huge breaking news that was announced via Rolling Stone. They talked to some of their sources, and this is in regards to the future of the DCEU and films that are coming, because obviously we had a big revelation in the last couple of days. Before we continue with this video, I want to tell you about today's sponsor, Skillshare. Skillshare is a great platform and an online learning community that offers classes to people from all walks of life and with all kinds of interests. And if you have that one thing that you've always wanted to advance in, Skillshare can help you out because it has an endless range of classes from a vast array of teachers who will help you with that specific field of interest. And as for me, as I previously said before, I'm a DC Comics fan, but if you guys didn't know, I'm also a filmmaker. I found Ryan Booth's class on DIY cinematography to be a really interesting introduction to cinematography, and I think this class would have been something that would have helped me when I first started out my filmmaking career whilst doing a degree in film. And so if you're at that beginning point where you want to start out and advance a specific skill like cinematography, and filmmaking, classes like Ryan Boost can be an invaluable boost to increase your confidence in a certain subject. So Skillshare's endless range of ad-free classes is perfect for anyone looking to learn. So use my code, the DCTV show, or click on the link in the description below to get a one month free trial of Skillshare and access the many classes that they have to offer. So please join Skillshare today to support the channel, but also to begin a new learning adventure and explore your creativity. So thanks again to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Okay, so back onto today's main topic. We're talking about this article from Rolling Stone. I'm gonna leave it in the description below. You can go read it afterwards, but the title is Batgirl Blindside, why Warner Bros decided to pull the plug. And so in this article they talk about Batgirl, but they also talk about the Supergirl solo film that is supposedly in development right now. So we're going to go ahead and read through this article and we're going to pull out the bits that we want to talk about. Obviously the main topic of today's video is the Supergirl bit. However, it's imperative that I reference the Batgirl film because it literally sets up everything that I'm going to talk about and this was shocking news and I have to mention this this comes right after the CW cancelled three of their Arrowverse shows, their DC shows so this is coming off the back of some huge DC shakeups, and this just completely came out of nowhere with the news that Batgirl has been officially cancelled. This was a decision made by Warner Bros Discovery, obviously Discovery just recently took over Warner Bros from AT&T, so their merger and their takeover is a huge deal because this is the reason why the Batgirl film has been killed, this is the reason why they are pivoting and we'll talk about that pivoting in terms of what their future plans are for DC films in the DCEU and beyond that. So yeah, Batgirl cost 78 million. It's not anything too big in terms of Hollywood productions, it's relatively low for a superhero film. It's more along the lines of something like Joker, right? In terms of what it costs to make. But also it should be mentioned that I believe it was going to cost them around 70 million as well to do marketing and actually release the film. And they weren't sure if they were going to release it in theaters and cinemas as well as on HBO Max because originally Batgirl was made for HBO Max and obviously they've been trying to push HBO Max really hard in the last year or so and I feel like it's been pretty successful but with this new merger and Discovery taking over Warner Bros it seems they are completely pivoting away from HBO Max and they are laying off up to 70% of their staff members that was reported somewhere I just remember that statistic and so that's crazy it's a high chance as of right now that HBO Max in the next couple of months could be a thing of the past. But let's continue with this article. So they go on to say, adding insult to injury, the film's cast members didn't receive a heads up and were blindsided, sources say. So that means Warner Bros Discovery and the head of Warner Bros Discovery, David Zaslav, made the decision behind the scenes without even consulting the filmmakers, the stars, 
anyone that worked on the films beyond a couple of people because it seems like everyone, including the fans, are completely shocked by this move because when do you really see a film that has been made, it's cost like nearly a hundred million dollars to make and they are in post-production and they just completely pull the plug just like out of nowhere. That does not happen every day, so that's why it's a huge deal. And this is a DC Universe film, it's not like it's some other property, it's like a huge character. It's Batgirl, right? Everyone knows Batman, and so you can presume people are going to watch Batgirl because it's related to Batman, and lots of people like Batgirl from the comics and different iterations of the character that have been seen in like animated shows and other things like that. And so, the film was set to star in the Heights is Leslie Grace, in the Heights actually another Warner Bros production, an HBO Max, you can see it on there, and so she would start as Barbara Gordon aka Batgirl and was poised to stream on HBO Max or receive a theatrical release, in a shocking turn of events it will get neither and it's being shelved altogether, so I actually find it hard to believe that they are going to shelve something as expensive and as valuable as this. I don't know if this is some sort of strategic move, are they going to like try and get the anticipation way up by shelving it and by putting it in the back burner and then eventually releasing it? And also I have to mention, this has Michael Keaton's Batman in it. This is not just like a Batgirl film, it's in fact going to star one of the most iconic Batmans in it and he is coming back and he's supposed to play a big, big role in it. And it was directed by the directors of Bad Boys for Life, which was one of the biggest hits of 2020. Yes, there wasn't many films that released in 2020 due to the pandemic. However, it was huge. It did really well. They are successful directors. They've been working with Marvel recently. And so loads of people were anticipating their next film and especially that being a DC Universe property like Batgirl, people were naturally excited. And so, yeah, they've made the decision, no HBO Max release and no theatrical release. I know from talking to people at Warner Brothers here in the UK, they were expecting it to come to the cinema. I'm pretty sure that's what they believed, I can't quote them on that. However, that is just the way that I kind of saw things. I thought it was going to release on HBO Max, but also play in the cinema, even if it was initially billed as an HBO Max film. And so, the article goes on like this. But why the abrupt move? Sources say the filming began testing with audiences on July 14th, and while Grace's performance was embraced, the overall feedback was harsh. One source familiar with the audience testing for the film likened it to a bad episode of TV, while another said it's definitely not theatrical, and the new regime at Warner Bros. Discovery, headed up by David Zaslav, like I said before, has handed down a mandate that DC films should be released theatrically or not at all. And so this is the new mindset that they are bringing into Warner Brothers, and so that means that they are putting less emphasis on HBO Max and trying to build a big streaming service, which obviously right now everyone's talking about streaming services, so it's just weird that they're suddenly just taking over the company and being like, okay, we're willing to throw away our streaming service, even though it's doing good right now, just in order to be faithful to theatrical releases, which is just weird considering, you know, the way that things are now. You have to consider both, right? It's not like you could choose one or the other, in my opinion. Obviously, you can make, you know, an HBO Max TV show and just air it there, but I feel like if you make something as big as Batgirl, you're going to want to have it on your streaming service and you're going to want to have it showing in cinemas if you want to make the most amount of money. And so the article continues, with Batgirl, studio executives faced a decision where they could spend another 7 to $9 million in post-production and special effects costs and perhaps more in reshoots to try and get the movie to a place where it would stand alongside some of DC's similarly small gambles like the upcoming Shazam! Fury of the Gods whose budget is 125 million. The consensus, according to the latter source, was that no amount of reshoots, editing or effects could elevate Batgirl to that level and the decision was made to not throw good money after bad. And so that is Warner Brothers Discovery literally taking a big dump all over the Batgirl filmmakers. And it feels honestly like a brash decision, like they literally started screening the film to test audiences just in July, like literally a couple of weeks ago. 
and then all of a sudden they're like, hmm, you know what? Let's shelve this film. Let's not spend seven to nine million more, which they could totally afford, by the way. Yes, they're trying to cut back on costs, but you've already spent a lot of money on this film, so why not see it through and actually release it and see if you can make your money back or do better than that? But no, it seems what they are trying to do is take some sort of tax cut, and that's just the way that it is working. Anyway, so we'll talk more Batgirl at the end of the video, but I feel like I need to move on to the Supergirl part of this video because that is the main topic of today's video, so I apologize that it's taken a while to get to it, but I did have a lot of thoughts and I'm going to continue with Batgirl just after the Supergirl segment. Okay, so if you scroll down on the article, you can see references to Supergirl, and this is how the article paragraph goes. Now, the prospect of other DC films being squashed looms. Insiders say Supergirl, which is in development, is not likely to move forward. Sasha Kale, who plays the caped superheroine, is introduced in the upcoming Flash film. Supergirl is going to spin off of the Miller-led temple. And so, yeah, this is confirmation that apparently insiders have been talking and are saying that Supergirl, which is currently in development, the solo film that would star Sasha Kale, is probably not going to move forward. It's not likely to happen. That is their words. And so, what do we think about this? Now, I was really, really excited for a Supergirl solo film, and to see Supergirl finally in The Flash. Right now, The Flash's release is completely up in the air. We don't know if the controversy surrounding Ezra is going to be too much for them to handle, and it's just going to be too troublesome to actually put the film out there. And so this makes us question again the future of the DCU, because you're not going to have The Flash, or at least this iteration of The Flash, much longer if things stay the same as they are right now, because like no one is going to actively want to watch an Ezra Miller film. But people are so excited for The Flash, I feel like they're going to watch it, and like I personally would 100% watch it because I want to see Supergirl, I want to see this version of Flashpoint in the DCU despite my personal feelings and I feel like a lot of you guys are like that. And so I think the biggest shame, and I've said this before, about that controversy is that Supergirl is probably going to be tarnished. Now I don't think this has anything to do with the decision in terms of the Supergirl solo film. But after that controversy came out, the one thing I was so happy about still was that the Supergirl solo film was still in development and it looked likely to go ahead just based on the projects that they have going on right now. They had Batgirl, they've been developing Blue Beetle. Both characters obviously are pretty popular to comic book fans, but to other people, not as popular as Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman and people like that. And so same thing goes to Supergirl. I feel like Supergirl is bigger than Blue Beetle and about maybe the same as Batgirl, maybe a bit bigger just due to the TV show being so popular. But I feel like HBO Max was such a good way to get kind of medium budget superhero films made. But with them throwing that completely out the window with this new management in charge of Warner Brothers Discovery, it's just not going to work out, it seems. It's just not that interest. They want to make theatrical films, they want to spend a hell of a lot of money, they want to try and follow the Marvel formula. I believe the head of Warner Bros. Discovery actually talked about this, how he wants to focus on making films that are part of this greater universe similar to Marvel. Apparently that's one of his inspirations. I feel like this is something that we were trying to do a long time ago, that didn't work out, so DC went to solo films and they found great success. Just look at Joker, it made over a billion dollars on a budget of like less than a hundred million. It did so well. And so with this, obviously they're still going forward with Joker 2, they're going to do that because it was successful and Warner Bros wants money because they are doing huge cuts right now, but they are not willing to make the sacrifice of paying money, and yes, it's medium budget for them, but they feel like they can allocate it to bigger films. That is just the mindset that they're in right now, it seems. And I think this is a big shame, and especially for Batgirl, obviously, because now it's gone, and it's being shelved, and lots of people are showing support for it. Filmmakers, I know James Gunn actually sent an email to the directors. That was nice of him, and it's cool that they actually released this. 
and hopefully there's enough pressure on Warner Brothers so they actually end up releasing Batgirl. But in terms of Supergirl, nothing has been shot, it's still in development. So we kind of presumed, oh this is happening but it's just not going to happen right now, like they'll release the Flash film and if Supergirl is popular they'll go ahead and start filming pretty soon and try and release it as soon as they can. But now it just doesn't seem likely at all that the Supergirl solo film with Sasha Kelly is going to be made. I think it's a huge waste of talent because Sasha was so promising and I really hope we get to see her in the Flash film when it eventually comes out. Plus also I don't think they realise Supergirl because of the CW show, yes it's not like everyone's favourite show but it's, it's a popular character, it's not just someone that you can just walk past and no one will know anything about, like people have heard of Supergirl, it's not like you say to a person in the street randomly you're like oh what do you think about Vigilante? Or before it was like, what do you think about Peacemaker? Well, these people have given them a chance and they've made them big. Like James Gunn, he's made Peacemaker big. I didn't know who Peacemaker was before. I literally didn't know about him at all. And that's the beauty of doing experiments. And with Supergirl, she's always been more famous because she is in the House of L and she is Superman's cousin. And that is a good marketing device for them initially. But then Supergirl was popular on its own, and that's why it went on for many seasons, and it was a big hit. So why not capitalize on that with Supergirl ending? I don't know, I don't see the logic in this, I understand that they want to release films theatrically, well why not give them a bigger budget then if you want to make it so big budget. So just rounding out my thoughts, I really do feel like they're just going to try and capitalize on the huge IP characters that they have. They're going to try and make a Batman 2 as soon as they can, even though it's not in the DCEU. It's a Batman, it did well, they are going to want to capitalize on that. I reckon this new regime is going to want a Superman, so I think Man of Steel fans can be happy about this. But for fans of characters like Supergirl or smaller characters like Blue Beetle, it puts that into question if that's actually going to be shelved or it's going to continue and actually get released because Batgirl is not like a low level project. You have Michael Keaton in it, for God's sake. Like it's not something that you can just throw away and I do feel like it's going to be released at some point if there is enough pressure and I think there will be enough pressure. We've seen that from fans of DC before and Zack Snyder fans specifically with Zack Snyder's Justice League being eventually released. I reckon we're going to see the Batgirl film at some point. I don't know if they're going to end up releasing it in cinemas or they're just going to release it online at one point if they give up to the pressure. But for now, thank you guys so much for watching and thanks to Skillshare for sponsoring this video. Please be sure to go click on the link in the description below and use my code the DCTV show to get one month off of Skillshare. But for now, if you did enjoy the video, please be sure to leave a like and a comment. It really helps out the channel. Also subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss any future videos. And you can click on the top right corner of the screen to watch my latest video. But for now, I'll catch you guys later. Goodbye. I see red.